Today we're at our test hill in central Washington where we're going to put this new 2023 Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The Chevrolet Silverado is a very popular full-size truck with a very long list of available options. The model we're looking at today is the ZR2 Bison. It's a number of packages that transforms this work truck into a proper overlanding machine. The ZR2 trim itself is pretty stout. It upgrades suspension to the Multimatic DSSV system, adds skid plates, and 18-inch wheels wrapped in Goodyear Wrangler Territory mud terrain tires. So I have seen in the YouTube comments uh, several remarks that the MT on these Goodyear tires does not mean mud terrain, it means maximum traction. However, I want to note both Chevy and Goodyear specifically call these mud terrain tires. Not just MTs, they call them mud terrains. You also get a 13.4 inch premium infotainment system and a digital gauge cluster. The standard engine in this package is a 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 V8. This produces a peak 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. It is attached to a 10-speed automatic transmission and of course it powers all four wheels with an automatic four-wheel drive system. The $7,900 Bison package adds 18-inch AEV wheels, AEV skid plates covering the front, the fuel tank, rear differential and transfer case, AEV steel front and rear bumpers, rocker protectors, the multi-flex tailgate, a full-size spare, and all-weather floor mats. One extra option that our vehicle has is the hard folding tunnel cover. Maximum towing capacity of this particular configuration, 8,900 pounds. Price as you see it here with some extra options, $85,300 US dollars, including destination. Pull myself up. <laughs> yeah, in this second row, there's definitely enough room for three regular size adults, uh, which is really nice. I got tons of leg room. Over here, I have a couple places to put my cups. I also get outboard heat on the seats. Person in the middle is out of luck. And I also get another pull down armrest here with integrated cup holders stepping out and if you don't have people in the vehicle you can flip the seat up and you get all this storage which is nice and there's also one more bonus storage area a secret compartment in the seat up front it does look a lot like just your standard ZR2 which is a good thing uh, we have these nicely tailored seats uh, they have uh, ventilated leather and then I also have the AEV logo up there to remind me that this is an extra special ZR2. I get a leather wrapped steering wheel and a little leather treatment on the gear selector there. Um, this does have paddle shifters though they are tiny. I kind of prefer the Raptor style paddle shifters but you know at least it has them and that helps me control the 10 speed automatic which of course is standard here. The transmission is connected to a full-time four-wheel drive system with four high, four low, two-wheel drive and an auto mode. Uh, one thing I like, lots of buttons. I have buttons for everything here, lane centering, parking, rear tailgate. I even get buttons for both a rear and front locker because yes, this has two lockers, which is neat. Yeah, I mean, overall, this is, this is a very cool truck. Um, I even like the upgraded widescreen digital display here. I like that it's not massive. It just feels like it's the right size. I can get lots of information and it also supports wireless Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. I do like the center gauge cluster. It's really clear, easy to read, and I have a variety of different layouts, all of which give basically the same information but in different ways. And this also has a digital rear view mirror, uh, which uses a camera in the back. That way, if I'm all loaded up with stuff here, I can still see out the back. This of course is the collision mitigation system. This has blind spot warning, lane detection, um, the full meal deal in terms of active safety features. 
Uh, and then, of course, it also has lots of towing. I have a brake controller here. I have a whole screen dedicated to setting up a trailer here. There is a large heads-up display. I can give or take those, but uh, it has it. Flick it into reverse, and we get a surround view camera and a really nice backup camera with tracking lines. That's awesome. Lots of different views, too. GM has never been shy about adding multiple views to their, uh, to their camera systems. So that's cool. Now that we checked out all the features, it's time for a little fun. Okay, it's big truck time. Let's see how this thing does on our mountain test course. So we're going to start with the Rattler. The Rattler is covered in rocks and it has a muddy climb out. And I, I kind of like this road to start with today simply because that climb out is going to be indicative of the kind of conditions I'll be facing when I go up the ladder and Python Pass in just a little bit. So right here, let's, <laughs> we're already spinning our wheels, but of course we're in two wheel drive. So let's go ahead and switch this up. Uh, I'm going to, what am I doing? Which truck am I in? I was just here a few days ago in a Toyota Tundra. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and do four high. And that should be fine. Now we do have some off-road modes here, but we don't get a lot. Uh, this has both uh, a terrain mode and an off-road mode. Terrain mode is more for like rocks and stuff. Uh, off-road is more wheel spin. So I think we're just going to stick to off-road right now because we need that spin to clear the lugs on these mud terrain tires. You know, this is kind of a funny time of year. It's while we're transitioning from the super dry summer into icy winter. And we have a few weeks of this kind of muddy sloppiness, which is kind of fun when you actually have a truck that has mud terrains like this one does. So we're in four high. I'm in drive. That's basically it. Now this has the DSSV shocks, which are pretty cool. Uh, they are special dampers that really help in specifically like doing desert running stuff, but they're also pretty good on rocky roads like this one. Of course, we have tons of clearance. We also have lots of metal bash plates underneath, so we should be okay. I don't have to take it easy here. And this is, of course, a really big, heavy truck, so it's got that going for it. This section right here is really going to give me an indication of what the surface is going to be like before I get in possibly over my head on Python Pass and the ladder. Let's do it. I'm going to try to keep the wheels spinning to help clear the lugs. As I power up and over, go in tight, keep that throttle in. Whoa, slippity. Oh, it's so slippy. Come on, can we got it? Do we have it? Do we have it? Do we have it? Yes. <laughs> So that wasn't too bad. I think, I think I wanna to try to do the Sidewinder next. Mud terrains, power, we should be fine. Oh man, we are slipping everywhere. Now, because this is so slippery, I am gonna use hill descent control. I just hit a button up here. I get the indicator there. Okay, and it sets it based on my descent speed. So I put the brake on to about two miles an hour and it should hold us at the speed as we go down the hill. Okay, doing pretty good. If I add a little throttle, then we can pick it up to two miles an hour. Nice. Now I'm gonna wanna do speed as I come out of this because I don't wanna get stuck in this trough in the mud. So I'm gonna go full throttle once we Oh, we're slipping everywhere. Okay, throttle in. Make sure we get up to the... We get up to the flat spot. Yes, did it. Okay, this is going well. So as you can see, if you haven't watched the show for a while, I've added more rock here, and I've added a pile of rock over here. So it should be a little bit more complicated. Won't be a problem for this truck, though. Although it is greasy. I mean, can you see how much mud is on my shoes? It's kind of nuts. Let's give it a try. So uh, going over the rocks here, I do want to put it into four low. So I'm going to switch into neutral, four low. While that's happening, I want to pull up the camera here. So up here, uh, we can pick cameras. Boop, right there. And now you can see we got 
tracking lines in the front and a surround view from up above. Okay, so we're in four low. We have our trail cam pointing forward. I'm gonna go as far right as possible because I get more rocks on that side. And we're just gonna ease over. This should be really easy for this truck because it has plenty of clearance. Yeah, no problem. Now we're just gonna throttle up this muddy steep area to try to keep these wheels spinning. Yep, come on, spin, spin, spin. Can we get up here? The biggest issue is steering when you're on grease. Come on! Yes! It did it! By the way, haven't even used the rear locker yet, so I haven't needed that, which is awesome. Four-wheel drive off. <sighs> yet again, a Silverado Chevy product has switched from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive on me. Let's go into neutral. Now it's in four low again. Okay, that's weird. Let's continue up this. Oh, let's turn on that rear locker. Okay, it's on. I think we're gonna need a little bit more. I think we're gonna need a little more runway here. So let's back up a little bit. Ah, it's so greasy. It comes to a point where you really don't have much say in which direction you're going. Oh yeah, eats it up, eats it up. Go bison, ha, ha, yeah. You know, I think we might be ready for, yeah, let's do Python Pass. I think we're ready. So I had the beginnings of a theory as to why this disengages that center clutch. It usually does it while I'm revving high in four low. So clearly it doesn't like to roll fast in four low, which it seems like I should be able to, <laughs> but I can, okay. So for this next run up Python Pass, I'm actually gonna put it in four high because I want wheel spin and I want the wheels to be moving very quickly. It's gonna get repositioned here. Before we do it, I'm gonna get a better alignment here. I'm feeling a little crooked. So let's make sure we get a straight run up it because I think I get one chance at this. And I'm really relying on the fact that this has all those metal underbody pieces because we got big boulders up this thing. Oh, I'm also gonna lock my rear and front diffs. Oh man, I gotta do four wheel drive low to use my front locker. Okay, in this case, I'm still just gonna use the rear locker then. I'm, I'm gonna allow this to have maximum wheel spin in four high. As we go, get some speed. Oh yeah, I think we got this. Turn in, turn in, turn in. Yes! Whoa, 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 whoa. that was close. Uh, 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 too big of a truck, can't make the turn. Okay, back up a little bit here. Hopefully we can get enough momentum to keep going and clear those treads. Come on, you got this, rotate. Okay, now unrotate, yes. Oh my gosh, this thing's going all over the place. It's so greasy today. Ah, the truck is too big, I have to reset. See, that's the downside of a big truck on tight trails. Come on, come on. Yes, it did Python pass. Woo! So now, do you think you can do the ladder? Let's find out. Even in muddy conditions like today, it was able to get up it. Now, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of wiggling, and I feel like with just a little bit more water on this course, it would probably be near impossible, at least without like mud swampers, you know. Whew. But my theory did kind of hold. Uh, we were able to keep it in four wheel drive, even when I was spinning those tires quite a lot. So uh, maybe that's the issue. If you're in four low, it doesn't like it when you really spin the tires fast and it disengages that clutch that sends power front to back. Now the clutch is important because the clutch is what, and that allows this to be a four auto setting because it can engage and disengage that clutch as it likes. Um, and in doing so, you can have full-time four-wheel drive. Something like the Toyota Tundra doesn't have that. It's a part-time system only, but it is locked. It is a true locked front to back or back to front um, when you use it. So, I mean, 
I kind of give Toyota a lot of garbage for not having a full-time four-wheel drive system on the Tundra, but fact is, it never cuts out into two-wheel drive on me. Get lined up here. Oh yeah. Right. Let's do this. Four high, off-road mode. Just that throttle. We're just going to try to hoist this baby up. Oh, no. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Oh, and that going backwards, that's a that's a fast slide. Okay, I wanna try it again, but add a little bit more speed on the entrance, and I'm gonna try cutting to the right a little bit. Ooh, that really dug down. So we can scratch up these black lacquer wheels. Let's try it again, and go. Oop, into the trough, and oop, 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 we're starting to slide. We're sliding, we're sliding. Not a fan of sliding. Uncontrolled sliding is not okay. So I'm gonna wheel us back. Yeah, that's sliding, my foot's on the brakes. <laughs> so this is a no-go for safety reasons. Even if I air down, I feel like we're gonna have too much sliding and I am just sinking. I like sunk a half a foot down into that mud. Let's go take a look at that. Oh, can I comment the parking button here? It should never be a button because if you push it, it's either on or if it's off, whereas other vehicles, it's pull for on, push for off, or vice versa. That way you have a different motion for on than you do for off. This one, sometimes it puts the parking brake on, sometimes it doesn't, depending on what mode I'm in. And I get out and I hit park and I've actually released the parking brake. So Chevy, you need to change that. Oh boy. Yeah, I am just absolutely sinking in this mud. There is no way to really get up this without like proper mud, like swamper tires. Uh, these conservative Goodyears just aren't, they're not gonna have enough. So I think we're gonna call it a day. Um, this Silverado ZR2 Bison, it is intense. I think that if we could actually take this on like a big overlanding journey, it would be very well equipped. I'm still not terribly comfortable with the whole center clutch giving up when in four low, not my favorite thing, but the rest of the truck, I really like. So if you're looking for a full-size truck that's equipped from the factory, I think the Bison should be at the top of your list. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.